Today, we're talking RPOs, why and when to use them, and I'm going to show you a couple of different schemes coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, I want to talk about RPOs. I'm going to show you some college footage of the RPOs being executed, and we're going to talk about when and why to use them. Now, a lot of guys have kind of gotten on the RPO kick, and it was really big for a while, and they thought that there was some kind of cure-all for your offense. It's not. Remember, RPOs are a way to give your quarterback an easy read, and it's a way to even the numbers in the run game. That's really all you're trying to do with it. If you could run the ball for four yards every single time, you would do it, right? That's how you would move the ball down the field. But because teams will stack the box, they'll put extra people in there, you need to have a way to even out those numbers. And so RPOs give you the opportunity to even those numbers with a simple read by your quarterback. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, if you love football content, if you love X's and O's, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. Get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Also, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. If you're ready for RPOs, give me that thumbs up down below and leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Now, it takes a lot of work and practice because the mesh in an RPO has to be on the running back. Can't be on the quarterback because he's keying downfield. So he's got to stick that ball out there, and the back has to create the mesh. But if you work it enough, you get your quarterback reading enough, it makes it a super simple read, and it's a yes-no read. As a quarterback, I always love that. It's either yes, I pull it and throw, or no, I hand that ball off, and that's it. So it could make it really easy on a young quarterback, something to get them going. If your team can't get it done up front, you know, if you're just being outmanned on the defensive line, your offensive line is being outmanned by a defensive line, then RPOs aren't going to solve that. But if you're pretty even across the board, if you're, if you're running the ball decently and they start to stack the box on you, RPOs give you a solution to either get them out of the box or to create leverage and to create space uh, and to get that positive yardage instead of running the ball by replacing that defender who is in the box with the ball. So I'm going to talk about a couple different looks today. We're going to look at it from inside zone, and we're going to look at it from power as well. I know a lot of you guys at home uh, love to run those gap scheme runs, the power, the counter, and then a lot of guys are zone guys. I like running it from everything. If you have a run in your playbook, you should have an RPO from it as well if teams start to stack the box. If you're killing them with outside zone, you should have an RPO off the outside zone. If you're killing them with the inside zone, you should have an RPO. Same thing for power, same thing for counter. Today, we're going to talk about two of them, and we're going to start off with the inside zone. So basic concept of RPOs. Do I have numbers in the run game? We're going to see an inside zone here from Utah, and you've got one, two, three, four, five offensive linemen inside. Defense has one, two, three, four, five, six. So you are outnumbered in the run game. Now, you could... Just abandon a defensive end, leave this guy, say, hey, we're just going to let him go and run it. Or you could run a zone read off that defensive end where if he comes and squeezes and gets himself involved to play, the quarterback can keep it. Or you can do it as an RPO. So RPO kind of evolved off of this zone read concept. And so what Utah is going to do here is they're going to run this as an RPO. Quarterback has the option of reading this backside defender. If he gets involved in the play, then he's going to pull that ball and he's just going to get a simple slant off the outside. This is as clean, as easy as it can be for an RPO. You even the numbers by throwing the ball and replacing that defender. We'll talk about that in just a second. So as you see here, gives a clap, gets the ball, keys his defender, throws the slant. Easy peasy. Doesn't get any simpler than that. And I told you, you want to replace the defender. To me, the cleanest RPOs are the ones for the quarterback where his read, in this case, this linebacker, is exactly where he's going to throw the football, vacating that space. So this slant coming into the window that this backer is vacating by attacking the run, it's a perfect attack. He steps forward, ball goes behind him, replace him with the ball, and it's good to go, just like a hot throw. In a normal passing down, this backer would drop a hook to curl, right? So the slant is coming right into that hook window. You have off coverage. You are replacing defender number six with the ball. 
If he were out of the box, you would have a hat for a hat, and you could run it. With six in the box, as a quarterback in the RPO, it should be an automatic, know who your key read is, and make the throw. See, quarterback reads it, backer comes downhill, throws a slant, and we'll look at it from the end zone here. So watch the quarterback's eyes, and you're going to see him reading this backer. Again, he is number six. He's the one that changes the numbers on the play and gives Cal the advantage here. And so once he steps down out of that hook zone and is approaching the run, he's going to be a run defender. Now you replace him with the ball. They call them the apex defender, the conflict defender in this case, because he is in conflict. If this backer drops and covers pass, now you've got enough numbers to run the ball. If the backer attacks and plays the run, now you replace him with the ball. So again, conflict defender because he's in conflict. Does he play pass or does he play run? Watch the quarterback's eyes here. Takes the snap. Back creates the mesh. He keys that linebacker stepping downhill and knows he's got the easy shot. It doesn't get much easier than that for a quarterback. There's one read. If the guy comes, I throw the slant behind him. That's as simple as can be. It's why RPOs are great for young quarterbacks. You don't have to have them decipher defense. You don't have to have them break down coverage. They don't have to go through multiple progressions. Just one guy. If he comes, I pull the ball and I throw it. If he stays back, we've got numbers. I hand it off and we run it. Don't forget, if you haven't done it, subscribe, ring that bell, give me a thumbs up, and please leave me a comment down below. You guys know the drill. Now let's take a look at an RPO off the power. So as I said, it's all about numbers in the running game. This time, you have an extra blocker in here in an H-back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got six. But the defense has lined up with one, two, three, four, five, six, and an overhang player for seven. So you're outmanned in the run game this time. What you're going to see is Utah has a quick out with a go route down below. Quarterback could play that angle if he wanted to. And they've got – the receiver runs it like a skinny. I think it was supposed to be a slant. And so quarterback knows that he's throwing this ball pre-snap as an RPO. They're out man. Regular power, what you're going to get, tackle and guard both tug, work back the backside backer, center's going to block back, guard is going to pull, get frontside backer, backside tackle is going to cut off. H is going to dig out defensive end, and you've got a hole. However, you can't do it here because this overhang defender is in your way. It's an extra man. He's unblocked. And so he'll be there to gum up the works if you run it. Quarterback knows he's going to throw. And so watch his eyes. He's actually going to key free safety in this case. Free safety comes off the hash, and you can tell beforehand it's a bit of that cover three look, right? You got one, two, three guys looking like they're going to drop into cover three. There's really nobody for that free safety to cover over there. But he's going to key that free safety, and when the free safety comes off the hash, he's going to try to throw the backside. Now the receiver turns his head before he makes his break and doesn't come out of it very clean, and the quarterback just misses him high. We'll take a look at this from the back end, and you'll see when you watch the quarterback's eyes, he's keying that safety's movement. That was kind of quick. We'll run it back here one time. Watch his eyes. Gets the mesh. Keys that free safety coming off the hash. And he's going to try to throw the slant in behind it. Now, I think that defensive end had a lot to do with why that ball was high. You're going to see number 33 get his hands up here. Quarterback kind of felt it. Just missed it. But it's a good answer. Because, again, with seven in the box and you're running power, you don't have enough men. Dig out the defensive end. Tug to backside backer. Come back and get backside tackle. Pull frontside backer. Cut off block on the backside. But there's nobody left for that man. And so because they have the extra man, you know you're going to throw it to start. You just got to give a good fake, make the right key, and let her rip.
So that's RPO 101 off of the inside zone and power. It's really effective. If you don't know a lot about RPO, you should learn about it. It's It can be really good, especially in the lower levels, the high school game. RPOs can be really effective, and it's a great way of getting young quarterbacks comfortable in a system, giving them easy reads to go with, giving them easy balls to complete, and taking advantage of a numbers game on offense. Remember, if you haven't done it, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. We'll be talking about more RPOs. I'll show you a lot more. I've got a bunch of them on film that I'm going to bring out this year. We'll be talking about play design. We'll be talking about coverages, quarterback play, all that stuff coming up. I appreciate you watching. I will talk to you again soon. <laughs>